Uh, it was actually Gamers 2 against uh, the opposing team of NIP, that was it. And they picked the Braum in that game. And uh, that's interesting. How's it going, hey, Stress? What's up? Hey. How's it going all the way at the, at the host desk over there? But either way, the band champions coming through will be Kale, Evelyn, and Yashiro with the second band of GSI. Bye, Stress. Yeah, it definitely we've will lost be. Stress. Yeah, it's gutted. I can see him laughing over there. He's trying to put me off. But as you say, Kale, Yasuo, and Evelyn have all been eliminated here. So back over to Ruff next to try and figure out who they want eliminated themselves. Now, we've seen a lot of Kale recently with that new kind of uh, Runans build that people have going. Does like clears waves super, super quickly, does a ton of damage, and scales really, really hard. So we won't be seeing that one this time around. Indeed, we won't be seeing Yasuo either. Uh, and the next ban will be Braum, so we're not going to be seeing him today. And everyone's really seeing him as a really top tier pick at the moment. So it's a good, like, there's a high likelihood we'll see Braum banned out in most of these games. Oh, definitely. There's, there's no doubts about that whatsoever. It's so, so strong right now, the bottom lane. Crazy, crazy stuff, especially with characters like Lucian. Yeah. That is a terror lane, if ever I've seen one. The Asua pick, interesting enough, actually, is going to be targeted across uh, towards Shadow. It's his most played champion in solo queue, 57% win ratio with him right now. So can definitely understand why they want to take that one out of his, uh, out of his arsenal. Yeah, I mean, when we uh, talk about a lot of these stats as well, matters, this is in Challenger. So when you talk about like 65% win rate or like 57% win rate, that's in Challenger. And those little bit of percentages over the margin of 50% actually matters a lot. Definitely. So the last band coming out was LeBlanc coming in from the team of Roughnecks. And that was quickly followed up by the first pick of Cassadin from Mozilla. Yeah, Cassadin. Slips through the cracks uh, alongside potentially Irelia and Lee Sin. Not too sure if we're going to see them locked in as a result, but Prebot is known for playing Lee Sin. He's also very, very good on the Elise as well. So either or would actually be pretty much right up his alley. Yeah, very possible. With Jax being banned out, then looking for another snowball champion in the top lane will be the Irelia. But they haven't quite locked it in, and they have plenty of room to maneuver in the first couple of picks. But that Caston, though, let's uh, a pick that has kind of had a roller coaster of being picked on and off because we've seen him a little bit in Korea and a little bit in the LCS now as well. But he had that remake, and then he fell off, and so he was kind of adjusted over time. Yeah, the last few weeks have been somewhat of a yo-yo for him, up and down, up and down. So. Are they going to go for the Elise? They didn't lock in their jungler this time around Roughnecks, so or they were flirting with the idea of leasing an Elise. So instantly, GSI are saying, OK, cool, you wanted the Elise, we'll take it for ourselves. Yeah, and we do see Twitch coming out with uh, no Lucian ban either. Basically, the two big AD carries at the moment have been Twitch and also the Lucian in the bot lane. And then you have like the trifecta of support. So you've got like the, the Lulu, um, uh, actually not the Lulu, that's not one of them uh, meant to say. Braum, Twitch, uh, Braum, Fresh, they both begin with T, <laughs> and also um, Morgana as well. And those are kind of the three big picks that we see in support. So we'll probably see a rotation of those champions coming up. But they are hovering currently, that being Roughnecks over Ezreal. And we don't see all that much Ezreal compared to those other two power picks. No, he's, he's definitely not, as you just said before, you know, the likes of Twitch or Lucian, who are top tier. He is very good in certain compositions, though, and he, you can still make that Ezreal work. This looks a lot more likely to me, though. Lucian alongside Leona is a pretty powerful lane and definitely one they could go for, but with Thresh available, would you prefer to go Thresh, Lucian, maybe? Very possible. Yero has played a lot of Thresh, not only in solo queue, but also the tournaments that they've played. So for him not to take Thresh here would be confusing to me, but in fact, they do not take the Thresh and opt more towards the Leona. So maybe saving that for later on in the day, not showing all their cards, but that's an interesting pick from, from Yarrow. But either way, that will be locked in and now looking towards the last two picks from GSI. Yep, so we'll be their support and by the looks of things, their top laner as well. So it's going to be top versus Irelia. What do you think would favor? I mean, Trundle is potentially on the yep. cards. Not too sure if that's going to get locked in, though. Very possible. We do have Shivana also open, but they lock in the Trundle, so they're quite happy to throw that one in the top lane. Again, lane swaps are always a possibility. If there's a lane they really don't want to go against, then they can just throw uh, the duo lane in there. We've had lots of lane swaps recently as well, so there's a plethora of uh, opportunities available to these teams. They don't have to go down the conventional route. That's very, very true. So Nami would be incredibly strong with Twitch because of a Tidecaller's Blessing, you get the additional damage, and then you've got the poisons on top of that. And Nami is very good as well, underrated in my opinion, actually peeling for AD carries. And Twitch is a very immobile AD carry. Yes, he's got his ambush, easily countered though if you just stick a pink ward or something down. So 
I do like the Nami pick here, and I think it's going to work well. Yeah, we see a lot of Nami kind of after that trifactor that we mentioned before, and uh, that will be locked in alongside Twitch in that bot lane. So we are seeing those two power AD carries coming out, the Lucian and also the Twitch, but some maybe different supports coming out from the conventional top three. And they were flirting with the idea of Velkoz, but we're not going to be seeing that one. We have seen a little bit of Velkoz just in the support role, but not really anywhere else. And the last pick was Lee Sin going for pre-bot in the jungle. And interestingly enough, you actually mentioned Velkoz. Yero is known for playing unconventional support champions. And in fact, I've casted him before when he's played Velkoz itself. They did have Leona locked in, so it was yeah. unlikely. But I would have loved to have seen a Velkoz myself. Maybe we'll see it later on today. Yeah, very possible. I mean, we've already spoken about his extremely powerful fresh, which was open in this champion select. So they have a lot of options available to them. And that definitely just shows their power just in champion select from the very start of the day. The fact that they have so many champions to pick from the entire champion pools is basically not banning out champions against them, it's banning out champs that they don't want to play against. Because if their champion pools are that large, they can't do anything about it. Yeah, and interesting enough as well, going back to Yero, his top four support champions in solo queue are Thresh, Morgana, Zillion, and Fiddlesticks. So Leona's not even in that top list. Yeah. But again, he's a very versatile support. You're going to assume that everyone, every single support in the world pretty much knows how to play Leona. Yeah. It's strong, it has been strong for a very, very long time now. Indeed, and sometimes we see Alistair picked into that. That's one of the good matchups for Alistair as a support, but we already had the support locked in, and that was Nami. In fact, no, Nami was uh, picked up afterwards, but yeah. they definitely wanted that with the, uh, with the combination with Twitch. Just giving a little bit more appealing for, for that hyper carry. What I will say is early levels, Twitch and, Le uh, sorry, Twitch and Nami need to play kind of safe. If Nami gets caught at level two in particular, she's going to get popped very quickly from the Lucian Leona combo crazy crazy quickly so definitely one to watch out for i would expect twitch and nami will play safe until they hit about level six or so and then they'll start to go in with their alts but we are on to the rift with these two teams coming out with gsi in the blue corner and it will be in the red coming up with roughnecks both these teams looking very strong from there just on paper they look pretty good we've spoke about that before matters and we do have a couple problems with our overlay at the moment but we will get that sorted out very quickly so it is the first couple seconds of the match, and I don't think we're going to really see a confrontation at this stage, Matters. But they are kind of progressing into that jungle. At least the GSI are trying to do something around this red buff. We'll see what they can do. It looks more like just the aggressive wards coming down here. Yeah, it seems to be the case. However, Roughnecks have sniffed this one out. They know what to expect. And on top of that, they're actually going to be jumping in with Crystalline taking point on Twitch. He's ate himself and Ignite has to flash away, but he's flashed into Jeebus and Shadow. And he will be falling for First Blood. They're going to turn this one back around onto Shadow, who also falls. All hell is broken loose in the first few moments. And now it could be Heaver falling down next from Jeebus. Indeed, he will get his double kill alongside with the First Blood. Well, I don't think we could have wished for a more exciting start to this tournament, Matters, with three kills already in one minute 20 heading into this game. Two kills going to the team of Roughnecks, while only one from GSI. That was incredibly messy, but everyone knew exactly what to do. When people were burning out from the Ignites, they stood their ground, they carried on shooting, and that just shows the caliber of play from these players already, not that they just turn tail and run and uh, try and just get out as fast as they can. So, that was an uneven trade, and they do have the slight advantage to Roughnecks. And that's one of the key determining factors as to why these players are at the very top level. As we can see that Prebot could be in a few troubles. He's stood on top of a ward right now, so Elise is thinking about this one Ooh. as the pause comes in. Inevitable, but this is a couple seconds where GSI at least have a couple seconds to think about what they're going to do uh, heading into this push. And they do have that warded, as you mentioned, but from Roughnecks, they don't know exactly what's heading around the corner. Steve is actually in that bush, so he's going to head around, see Taiki, and then we might have a fight coming up. Definitely. So hopefully we'll get a, a quick nod soon as to what the issue is. And we can relay that onto you guys and give you an idea of how long we're going to be in this pause for. But let's talk about how that opening few moments affect this game. Lucian, double kill, has already gone back and picked himself up a Dorans. On top of that, Chris Lund, a very immobile AD carry, as I mentioned before, especially against Leona, has burnt flash and heal. So that is a brutal lane already for Chris Lund. Yeah, and Lucian has a slight upper hand in the first couple of levels anyway, so that's just going to exacerbate how tough it is for them in the bottom lane. We'll have to see how that one resolves itself. We did talk before about the possibility of lane swaps. So if they send, you know, their weaker lane into the top lane, for example, then they might be able to do something with that. And we do actually see Twitch in the top lane 
So maybe that's a tactic they're going for. Just being behind early, making sure you can catch up. Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm trying to look across the board here and see, you know, it's very early days. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves and say that Roughnecks are a mile ahead. Yes, they're ahead. Yes, they have some advantages. But what we haven't mentioned is that Mozilla did pick up the kill. So at top lane, he does have the advantage over Irelia in that sense. So if he can get the, the ball rolling and get snowballing at top, if Twitch can get to the later stages of this game, he will scale incredibly strong. So will Cassidy. So yeah. they just got to kind of buckle down deep and try and get towards that 30 odd minute mark. Yeah, and in a sense, it is the perfect scenario for the Trundle matchup because he wants to be ahead at all stages of Irelia because she is a ticking time bomb. She'll eventually get to that stage where she can 1v1 anyone, uh, anyone on your team, then 1v2, then 1v3, and just dive on your AD carry. And we have actually resumed the game, so hopefully we can get that on your screen very shortly. But they did head around the side and they are just warding them away from this red buff. Bit of just low taps at the moment. Steve just putting down the down. See who can pick this one up. It's going to be Brevon heading away with this one. So they went for that invade. It didn't pay off. It didn't. And that's going to put Kaiki a tiny bit behind. He's now going to have to back towards his own blue buff and pick that one up. And in the meanwhile, Lee Sin looked to be a thorn in the backside of the rest of GSI. Potentially come to mid before the Rift Walk is available for Cassidy. That's where he's vulnerable and weak. Once he's hit six, he's very slippery, very difficult to lock down. Yeah, that was really important for Prevol to have picked yeah. up. Red buff uh, early for junglers is so much damage, plus the extra level is really important. Perks getting pushed around in the mid lane, which is kind of to be expected. Lulu mid lane is that classic bully, a lot like Kale that we've seen before, and especially against a Caston lane, it's just not good times. But as uh, this is basically what we see all the time nowadays, the buddy system, which was coined by uh, Jat over in NA. We'll just be going through the jungle together, just sharing some of that XP because we have gone for those lane swaps. And this is a good call, I have to say, from GSI because of the reasons I mentioned before. Twitch is going to suffer for the next five or so minutes. So put him in that 1v2, let him get some free farm and negate and mitigate the problems that came with that double solution. That will put Trundle in a pretty sticky situation, though. Yeah, absolutely. So Taiki and Mozilla just moving through the jungle together and it's very even between those two laners. But it's pretty much just a freeze game at the moment. But in the bot lane, uh, we do have Roughnecks going for a slightly more aggressive approach, having a larger wave stacked up and another minion wave behind them. They may be able to not maybe take down this turret, but take a very large chunk out of it at the stage matters. Yeah, and also looking at the composition from uh, Roughnecks, I said before that GSI scale very well, but you look at Roughnecks, so do they. Let's be honest, they've got an Irelia and a Lulu. So Irelia goes in, Lulu hits Wild Growth, and suddenly that's a very scary target to deal with. One that Twitch is going to suffer with, I'd have to say. So you're seeing the GSI trying to put as much pressure at top as possible. Three players, in fact, congregating around this area. They're four, in fact. Yeah. And Pro Prebot's been basically forced to come top lane. They're going to be engaging on this. It will be aggressing onto them. The bubble comes across. It will land onto Steve. The flash comes down, and he gets away from that sticky situation. Well, forced the summoner, and Irelia is in a 1v2, so that was definitely worth it. They're going to be able to probably pick up this tower as well because they're putting so much aggression. Meanwhile, the bot lane, Ojibus has been left to his own devices, and he's going to get that tower as very well very shortly. So, across the board, each team that they're exchanging blows, nobody's gone down just yet. I'm not even sure the GSI can take this out on this wave. They have three members stacked up there, but they ha only have one mini wave. How they do have the cannon minion there, and Steve is only by himself with Lee Sin being pushed out. We do have a rotation from the mid lane with Lulu and Lee Sin, and also Yero has joined the party, so they will repel the assault, putting them one tower ahead of their opponents and an extra kill. Yeah, so I was there was me saying GSI should pick up this tower. It's not to be the case. They're going to keep this one alive just for a bit longer, Rough Next, and Prebot is constantly staying at the top lane, trying to make his presence felt, picking up the double goal. And Lulu did try for a few moments to uh, rotate to top, as you mentioned, but went back to lane and just got some more farm against Cassidy. Indeed. So Prebot, he did have uh, that situation before at top lane. Now just going back to his jungle. Both of the junglers at the same level of level three. And this is also the patch where the changes have come in with uh, jungle experience. So any damage that is done will be sticking to these junglers as well. Yeah, definitely going to leave some marks. Still, the top lane has not fallen. And you can see that Leona is sneaking away up towards top alongside Lee Sin. He's stood on top of a ward right now. So Chrysland and... 
Eva should have an idea of what's going on. They should try and turn this one back around with Elise, who is coming top lane as well. Engage is actually going to kick off at the top. They are going for this guy. They head in onto Eva, taking so much damage. Ignite is ticking down. They pick up back kill. Three and one right now. Turning this around to Steve. They pick up a kit on return. Now heading onto Prebot. He gets the safeguard back to a minion. Yarrow, however, is the sacrificial lamp. Perfect pillar, but the flash over the pillar as well has actually blocked off his team, taking even more damage. The flash forward by Mozilla, and another kill goes to Quizlan. Huge plays from GSI. It started pretty poorly though with Heaver dying and I, I have to feel that Heaver should have just pulled back a bit quicker than that. Had the flash available, you should be able to escape and then turn that one round afterwards. But still, damage surely has been done now that Twitch has managed to pick up a kill. So has Elise. So the problems that he was having before with Lucian, not quite as prevalent. Speaking of Lucian, Jeebus after picking up the bottom tower has rotated to top. So they are going to keep this one alive and ticking for a few more moments at least. Has at least bought them some breathing room. Jeep is actually, I'm not sure if you caught that, but was very close to death as, yeah. uh, as the pillar came up and he was able to get away from that. So three to three so far in kills, but again, it's like CS, or rather gold advantage, heads to Roughnecks because of that extra tower. Top tower is still very low, so in the co next couple of minutes, they should be able to even that one up. But as you mentioned, Jeebus has headed up to the top lane to uh, at least apply some more pressure. They're gonna have to at least have three members there to push them back. Yeah, they're constantly ahead in the objective wall right now, and that, that's an important moment for Roughnecks, because again, when the towers start to fall, that's going to allow Aurelia, it's going to free her up to go ahead and split push, and that's what Aurelia does very, very well. But here comes Chrysalin, it's going to be sped up from that Tidefaller's Blessing, that's the synergy I was talking about before, but to lock down Illusion is always very, very difficult to pull off. Yeah, especially because the bubble was so scripted, it's like, oh, yeah. there's a bubble, Relentless Pursuit, and then he's just out of dodge very, very easily. Uh, in the mid lane, though, Kassam has already hit level 6 without anyone really touching him at all. Like, Lee Sin had to sit at top lane. Prebot had nowhere else to go because he just had to be there to defend the tower. And as a result, Perks is like, okay, I guess I'll just free farm. And it's actually ahead in CS over Lulu. Yeah, that is pretty scary if you're playing against Kassam. And really, you shouldn't be out farming Lulu, but Lulu has died, so I guess that is... Uh one reason why that may be the case, but at top as well, an important thing is that Tycho's Blessing goes down, is fired from Twitch onto Lucian, he just relentless pursuits away, gives him more rune, but also totally cancels the slowing effect. So again, Lucian is just a really solid pick here, and already with the BF Sword is difficult to deal with. Absolutely. So, mid lane again, Perks just throwing down that damage onto Shadow at this stage. He's kind of returning with obviously the, uh, the polymorph and the glitter lances, but Perks is quite happy just to shrug off most of the damage. He's gotten past a difficult stage in his laning phase. Yero clearing out the wards as well, no one really to stop him, and Roughnecks, even though they just have a slight gold advantage, they have some significant control over the board, not only in towers, but map control. Uh, and they do have the extra CS on Lucian and the extra two kills. So in that regard, they're in very good shape. I guess the only thing to keep in mind on is perks in the mid lane. Yeah, exactly. And you hit the nail on the head as well. And I mentioned this previously, that Cassidin suffers before level six, especially with Elise in. Those are the moments when you want to capitalize and you want to punish. But again, this is where the genius of that lane switch up comes about. Not only does Chrysalin get back into the game, but Lee Sin then has to stay at top lane to stop the push and isn't there for dealing with Cassidin. So Cassidin just gets a free ride. In the top lane, they finally take down that turret, and the first arc of prison does hit Jeebus, but no one around to really capitalize on that one. So, in terms of gold at the moment, there's quite a lot of gold to be spent on Irelia. And speaking of top lane, though, Chrysalin is getting completely exploded. Jeebus has also another Acroprism lands onto him. Can they return with the damage? Tyke is dropping so incredibly low. We'll have to flash out. And also, Heva has to back up to into into the opposing jungle. That's not your jungle, bro. And Freebot comes in to sweep up the mess. But Perks is also coming in from the mid lane. May need to get out himself with Shadow also collapsing in. Heva has one shot from death. Jeebus, can he get in range? Yes, the last relentless pursuit but goes the wrong way and that'll be a no but meanwhile perks is still taking some damage now everyone's collapsing in he was just a little bit too late to that party and they pick up another kill and that was all without irelia who i'm not sure if he caught that but tried to charge in the teleport and it got cancelled by trundle so he scumbagged her away but they still just mopped up that team fight anyway and we were talking before about how perks could be the, the playmaker here and kind of get twitched towards the later stages. Well, if he gets nuked down like that, he can't do a great deal. He is going to be dead and buried. They pick up another tower.
power, and they're therefore just going to back away and spend all the gold they just accumulated. It really was just superb map movements from Roughnecks, and I commented in that, in that play with players, it's just like, Where's Nami going? That's, you know, that's not going the right way. You're trying to be the sacrificial lamb, but everyone went in one by one, one by one, and they just constantly get, got picked off by the meat grinder that was the team of Roughnecks already being there with the four-man stack. And I guess DSI just had to be a little faster to the punch. Yeah, that's the key thing. And again, they have to try and keep themselves going until the later game. Leon has picked up two kills, which, you know, a kill's good, but you'd rather be that on Twitch. You'd yeah. rather that Twitch was getting the kills or at least cast it in. That's a bit of an alarm bell ringing right now. That's a bit of a red flag. But GSI, they have the composition, they have the means to pull this one back. Roughnecks, though, have had enough of this, and they're going to go for yet another objective. This dragon should be by and large theirs. In fact, it's going to go down right now. Yeah, absolutely. 11 minutes into the game, that's very easy for these guys to pick up, and just extending their gold lead even more in this game. And GSI can't really respond with a fight. We saw how it went in top lane, and they don't want to go for round two just yet until they get a couple more levels, a couple items under their belt. So it's really just the, the picking game for these guys at the moment. Yeah, Twitch desperately needs that Blade of the Rune King finished off so we can deal with Irelia and get some more, uh, be able to basically kite around for longer. Plus the fact, of course, the attack speed with the rat -tat, tat and the extra lifesteal is always a bonus. So that's a big item for him right now. Whereas on the flip side, you can see Lucian already has his Bloodthirster. He's been getting some more farm as well. They have more objectives on top of that. So if it comes out to a straight up trade right now, Lucian's winning. There's, there's no doubt. Yeah, for sure. And uh, those two kills have just not really increased from the first two kills of the game that went on to Jeebus. So in terms of CS, he is now slightly ahead, but has been for uh, a significant length of time. And Chrysalis has actually caught up and is actually encroaching on that CS total. So he is catching up in terms of AD carries. And if we are looking at the long game for GSI, that's exactly what you want. But they have gone for the engage in mid lane. That's a really ballsy play. There's a solar flare though on Taiki and the follow-up damage. Colin comes through. It's not going to be enough damage as Heaver will block most of that one away. Mozilla comes in with the teleport, but the fight is pretty much already finished. Well, they threw up the pillar just to kind of annoy them more than anything. It doesn't really do any damage. And now they just go back to the stack in the mid lane, but everyone is still hanging around. Roughnecks quite adamant that they want to try and do some uh, some damage to this tower. It's a question of whether GSI want to bite the bullet, let them take the tower, but they get a perfect Aqua Prison onto Jeebus and also the Polymorph onto Perks. Just lots of poke coming back and forth metas, but no kills. I have a pretty strong inclination that if the likes of Heaver and Perks had more health, they would have gone all in on that, that bubble because it was really nice. But you look at them, they're very weak. And yes, Yarrow is suffering a tiny bit right now on hit points, but the rest of them are by and large strong. So that for me would have been a bit of a suicide engage, and therefore they did back away. Smart play from them. Yeah, not going to go for that suicide mission just yet, and they are chipping away at the turret. Yarrow gets cocooned up. We'll take some more damage from Taiki and the rest of his team. Just chiming in. And they are just waiting for wave by wave. They have nothing else to be doing other than just sitting in mid lane, chipping away at this turret, showing that they are boss in this game at the moment. But they are letting the uh, letting the waves head back to the base. And the ping actually just went down from DSI saying, hey guys, we actually had a large wave in the top lane. So they're going to have to deal with that at some point. I do like this relentless uh, aggression, though, from Roughnecks because Twitch has enough money for Blade of the Rune King, which is a massive spike for him, but they're not allowing him to go back. Fair enough, they've just pulled themselves back, so now he's going to go back and finish that item off. But beforehand, he was forced to stay, because if he leaves, the tower falls. Yeah, and Roughnecks really just feeling that they weren't making enough headway in the mid lane. They were chipping away at the turret, but they weren't taking it down to yeah. critical numbers. So it's like, okay, guys, let's just back off, go back to farming and plus our buffs have spawned as well so you we might as well get those get stronger for the next fight dragon will be up in three four minutes so this will be around for that and plus top wave was pushing so i really will also want that farm on her belt already ahead of trundle and getting further and further ahead that early kill sort of did a little bit in in the ways of suppressing irelia but because they were in different lanes it really didn't have an impact and this whole game as a as a as a result of that first fight and the lane switch up afterwards, you look at the F, uh, sorry, the farming stats for the entire teams, nothing really standing out is extraordinary. Everyone's under farming, but that's because of the situation they've been in. These constant confrontations, already we're seeing almost all 10 players stacking in mid for multiple minutes, so that's affecting the farm across the board. Again, though, this is just ticking it to later and later on in the game where Twitch is going to pull himself back. 
Yeah, you said before, Messers, that both these teams are looking to go to late game. So either team are in a rush to finish it as soon as possible. It's like, okay, we'll take a couple objectives here and there. We'll take all the farm that we possibly can. But we want Irelia pretty much up to two items, looking for the Trinity Force. Maybe even the Zephyr looking for the boost, the insane moving speed you can get with that build we see often in, in, uh, in the EU. Again, Kasten and Twitch going to be monsters in team fights. So neither team are in a rush, and you can see that by the pace of the game. Two towers to one, uh, around 15 minutes into this game. Only one dragon going down, of course. And at least we have had some kills, eight kills in the game. So it's been somewhat bloodthirsty, but it's not been all-out action. But the important thing for GSI is that if they are going to try and poke and push and have this 3-2 formation, that they do it quickly and they make something happen because every second they spend is a second where Aurelia is getting more and more farm, getting closer towards the likes of that Triforce and play the Rune King or if she wants to go tanky. So you don't want to let her get too big. So they have to try and make something happen. Something that's standing out to me at the moment is GSI don't seem very decisive with their map movement. It's like, oh, yeah. they're in mid game, let, uh, in, in mid lane, let's go and stack there and as soon as uh, Roughnecks decide to back off, they're being the proactive ones, even though it's like a kind of defensive play, they're still being proactive. And it's always GSI reacting to that, but not very quickly. And in terms of vision, they have at least some wards over the map. They're just not reacting very quickly. And that's not particularly like from shock calls. It's more just individual players knowing where they need to be at the point in the game. And it's not for lack of wards either. I mean, you can see across the board, there's a lot of vision down for both teams. It's just, it seems to me right now that Maybe the nerve of the is the first game on the stage of DreamHack 2014. Bottom lane, Chrysland is going on Shadow, but there is the wild growth. Contaminate comes out, not enough damage, and Lulu will fight to live for another day. It does show how strong Chrysland is, even at this stage in the game. Like, he is 1, 2, and 2, has a decent amount of gold, but Yero and Steve both get double bubbled. Prebot is just walking around the side. With Dragon now alive, we could see a fight erupting any point in time. Yaro taking the brunt of the damage so far, and they will clear out that pink ward. I think they will have the dominance over that small brush area. Yeah, which is always key when Dragon is live, and, and that's the reason these players are interested. Lulu actually was just back at spawn, so Shadow's going to be a bit late to this one after being forced to burn his ultimate just to survive. You can see Yashin also on Lucian, so Triforce next more than likely coming up. Interesting longsword as the solar flare actually lands in mid. And they go in for the engage. Another double wall comes out. Hurt on to pre bomb Yera this time round. The cooling comes across. Critland taking a lot of damage. Mozilla has to flash out behind them, however. Burst returns with some damage himself, but no kills go down, but a lot of ultimates burn. Yeah, lots of ultimates, few summoners as well thrown into the mix. And have a look at this. Roughnecks afterwards are coming out slightly ahead because Trundle's so low, can't really afford to deal with this one. He does have teleport available though. Question is, can this dragon go down before teleport comes into effect? Answer is a yes. Are they going to engage off the back of it though? Nice pillar down from Mozilla. Now going to be chasing on top of this one. Steve taking the brunt of the damage. Beautiful wild growth, knocking everybody into the air. They're turning this one back around right now and Roughnecks are more than likely going to clean this one up. Jeebus is in for his triple kill right now on to Mozilla and there we go he secures it with style so it was a dragon and a bunch of oh. kills to boot. Prebot goes in lands the Q goes fully syndrome goes right past the tower picks up that kill and they pick up four and zero on top of the dragon and the tower. Couldn't have gone much worse for the yeah. SI <laughs> yeah. honestly and now are they gonna try Baron? They have the life to do this. And if they get it, this will be cataclysmic for GSI, losing the dragon, the tower, the kills, and the Baron. They have no vision over this at all. I think it's clicked, however, in the support of Heaver's brain. It's like, I think something's up. Everyone disappeared off the map, places down the ward. Can they get the pick? Another double, but what absolutely crazy with those Aka prisons. Yero doesn't quite land the Zephyr, and the Baron is dropping incredibly quickly. They take it down. Now's the time to return with some damage, but Perks is here, and he is chasing down Steve. Oh, that was a beautiful solo flare, keeping Steve alive for a few more seconds, but will be finished off as a result. Yero goes back in, in doing so secures his own fate, and Crystalland picks up that kill. Still though, Baron on three of Roughnecks players, a lot of gold in their back pocket that's left of that dragon and four kills. I think Roughnecks are quite happy to shout worth at this point. Yeah, uh, pretty <laughs> with, much. With Baron going down and still on three members at 20 minutes into the game, proportionally, that's crazy. The amount of stats doesn't really scale to the point where if you get it earlier in the game, it's even more proportionally to your go total. And it's just an uphill struggle for GSI at this point. They're four kills down, but you look at the goal total and over 6,000 gold and objectives and the Baron, 
everything. You can just list off constant objectives and they've all gone to Roughnecks. And if this was at 40, 45 minutes, I wouldn't be saying it's, it's the end of the world, but this is at 20 minutes. Yeah. But this huge difference is in effect. And Roughnecks, they've got big items now. Aurelius finished off the Tribe Force. Lucian is very close to finishing off his as well. So it's a hard one to say here that Roughnecks aren't just going to go ahead and snowball this game. So if you're in GSI's shoes, it's like, well, they're hitting these big power spikes, they've got Baron, and okay, we can maybe wait out for the next four minutes, just waiting for that buff to expire, and then maybe that's our time to strike. Do we strike at the next dragon? And But the previous two dragons, the first one, they just gave up with no contest. The second one was disastrous. Everyone was scattered, they just chased them down. And that's actually the second fight in this game where they kind of go in one by one, and the soul of their mid lane, they just explode perks, just adding more kills to their roster at this point. That's just another one on the tally. And on top of that as well, Nami fired in the tidal away to try and keep himself alive, so that's not gonna be available to stave off this inhibitor tower push. And you can also see the trundles at bot lane, so they're gonna do a lot of damage. In fact, they're more than likely just gonna go ahead and straight up pick up this tower and the inhibitor afterwards, and there is nothing GSI can do about this. They still have a ton of minions behind them. Yarrow was actually the one tanking up the turret for the minions. They had the, re uh, the reduced damage because there were minions near, but Mozilla, the Q lands, pre bot will just zone them away, and that's the inhibitor going down without well, any real contest. The Culling comes through, and will they go for the full scale fight? They go in. Oh, Crystalline has been exploded, and it's going to be Cassidy coming back into the fray here just to watch all of his team fall in front of him. And indeed, it will be four players for zero. Roughnecks are just crushing this game. In fact, this is pretty much over. Pretty much the curtains are coming down on this game, then, as they have, however, run out of minions. But with four members down for the next 10 seconds plus, they have another minion wave there. Perks is still scary. He's full HP. He's actually doing fairly well on this team, has the rod. Don't want to be uh, donating kills his way. So as a result, they back off, they play their safe game, and they just clear out all of the camps in the jungle. I do like this, though. Better to be safe than sorry. You go in, you get the Nexus Tower. You have claimed a lot of scalps as well. There's an inhibitor down. I mean, everything's looking good. There's no need to stay around and be greedy and end up getting aced as a result. I mean, that, that's just not a good plan at all. But you can see now they're going to go back. They're going to bolster their weapons once again, their items and come back even stronger. And, you know, Blade of the Rune King and Ghost Blade on, on Twitch is just not gonna cut it at this stage. Yeah, and you'd like to hype up a game, but at this stage, it really does just feel like Roughnecks are making sure they have everything available to them, and they'll go for that one last push, that last nail in the coffin, and that'll be it for GSI's chances in this best of one. In the very first game of uh, the DreamHack series, we have six games to the day, guys, so stick around. We have plenty more League of Legends action coming up, but game is still not done and just, uh, just yet. Nope, not quite yet. So maybe I called it too early, saying it was pretty much over. <laughs> maybe. Perhaps. Maybe they'll bounce back and pull off an epic comeback. Stranger things have happened in League of Legends, That's true. Let's, be, let's be honest. So let's uh, have a look. I thought Terminate was coming to attack this there. <laughs> I don't know what that advice was. But you can see that Yero has been caught out of position completely, and he should be falling. Or oh, will he actually Ooh. flashes through? There's the repel. Yeah. And they do finally get their man. So this is an interesting story because throughout Yarrow's history, he's always had a problem with late game and when his team is significantly ahead, getting caught out in an opposing jungle. Even when wards, uh, you could just place as many wards down as you wanted from support, it was always a problem. And even now you have that cap of three plus the, uh, plus the pink ward, Yarrow still getting caught out, and that just delays how long it's going to take for Roughnecks to close out this game. It means that those buffs that they've just picked up, they're going to time out because Yarrow, they have to wait for him to get back with the rest of the team. That's exactly it. So four seconds now on Dragon, and that is going to be incredibly comfortable again for Roughnecks. There's, there's no two ways about this one. Can they close it off, though? Because this is early stage of the tournament. There'll be other, the other teams, I'm sure, are watching this game right now and trying to put together what their tactics and strats are going to be. So if Roughnecks do go ahead and, and make this another five, ten minutes before closing out, that's far from ideal for them because they've such a good position right now. Yeah, and that extra pick also went onto the mid laner of Perks, onto Cassidy. And you know, when Kasten gets just a couple kills, he just snowballs out of control. Yeah. And even though he is very far behind, just getting that last hit on a group of targets can be very detrimental to the team of Roughnecks as they try and take down another inhibitor turret. And right now you would expect them to be sieging the Nexus, but they didn't take down both of the Nexus turrets. They just try and siege out the outer uh, 
inhibitor turrets as well, but there's the constant pressure in the mid lane, and that's causing problems for GSI, who have to commit members there, and Roughnecks take this opportunity. That's exactly it. That was a nice cocoon, though, and the Aqua Prison as well. They're going to be engaging this one. Tidal Wave comes through. Yero again is taking the brunt of the damage. That's not the uh, target that they want. Look at Jeebus at the back lines. He's completely full hit points, and he's just rocking through everybody. Picks up one with the culling, has to back off. Aqua Prison landing once again. He has had a blind of the yeah. game so far, boss. I kind of feel sorry for him. Can I just say, if there's an MVP of this game, it's going to be Heaver, but they dash in, the repel comes up, and Taiki gets away. Jeebus and the rest of the team are actually fairly low, and they do have another minion wave coming in. And again, it's Perk still being alive. Steve teleports the top lane to deal with that wave, but every time that Kasten is not dead in the team fight, it's like, okay, guys, let's disengage. We just, our main objective is not giving kills to him. But back onto Heaver, triple bubble in that fight. Insane. Yeah. Pretty much kept his team alive. Yeah. And also, a 1 for 1 trade when you consider that Jeebus, who's 6 0 and 6 right now, with a Triforce, Bloodthirst, and Last Whisper, was left completely open at the back. He even had a wild growth on him, because why the hell not? Yeah. And he was unable to clean up that fight. And that was largely in part to Heaver. So, they are <laughs> hanging on by the skin of their teeth, I think it can be said here, Matt. Yeah. GSI are still in this game. We did say it was almost over around four minutes ago. But now Baron is live, and that's a very big objective on the map. Roughnecks, if they go about this one in the wrong way, we've all seen the Baron throws from many different teams. If they go for this one in a sloppy manner, then could be the chance for GSI to come back into this. Again, if Roughnecks go for like a bot lane push or something, then GSI can maybe sneak it. So just with that objective being on the board, it does give them a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel. That's true. We've seen Baron throws a plenty in this game, so you never quite know uh, what this one is going to throw out for us. And Okay, Twitch is starting to get towards the scary mid to late stage. It has a, a BF sword as well right now. But look at that, double Randwins on the side of Roughnecks. They want to completely close this one off. They don't want Trundle to get any attack speed. They don't want Twitch to either. And you can see that right now, GSI are actually pushing through mid. They need to be careful. If they get caught from that solar flare, it could be the end of the game. They do have that Warden, so they will see Yarrow as he encroaches on their position. They will just back off back into their jungle. So. They do get out alive, they just take the smart route, and they continue to keep themselves alive in this game. And Roughnecks aren't being as aggressive as they were before. You can just even see this in the jungle, uh, jungle right now. Chrislin able to at least get his own buff. That's something we haven't seen for a while. So Roughnecks being a little more but like conservative about the closing out of this game, which is probably the right call. They're respecting the comp of Yes. They're, they're realizing that if they do put a few steps wrong, they are going to allow GSI to come right back into this. Yes, they've got a vulnerable. Steve is dropping and Jeebus as well is on the completely in the wrong position. Double kill comes in for Chrislin. The worst place it could have gone. And Perks following forwards the flash and another flash to follow. Steve is getting chunked down. Here's the teleport. Can he get in range? However, the whimsy speed should be able to keep Steve up and running. In fact, he didn't even use whimsy. He just used health picks to give him the shield. So it's like, all right, I'm out. I'm using whimsy on myself and you can have my shield. There seemed to be a massive lack of communication there. Yero went in balls deep by himself, and then in doing so, there was no real peel for Jeebus, who then went in second. And it's yeah. like, hey guys, I'm a fed AD carry, take me for free. After that, the fight's over. They, they can't deal, and this should be a Baron. So GSI, they're right back in this game. I mentioned this before, that uh, but Baron is available on Preball. What are you doing? He was trying to maybe go for the steal, and this two-man stack should be able to keep him away. Baron is not low enough just yet. Yara jumps over the wall, but they have no might. Yero against one versus five. Can he do anything? But they pick up one. Shadow has already come back from base after respawning and now they still go for this fight. The Baron was picked up however by GSI. The double kill now comes in. Yero is still there. Steve is also joining as the cavalry but Shadow has already dropped and GSI disengaged. At least they managed to get the Baron and on two members. Yeah, they get the Baron and they also uh, do manage to pick up a couple kills as well. Fair enough, they lost three themselves though. So again, Roughnecks did somewhat make the best of a bad situation and they did close the gap a lot quicker than I was expecting. I thought the wave clear, uh, sorry, I should say Baron clear from GSI was a lot better than that. And now Perks has got himself down, he's got himself on his hourglass as well, so he's going to be able to be alive for longer and just pain in the backside of Roughnecks.
Absolutely, and Taiki is trying to find himself a cocoon on these two retreating members, and they really want to go for this. Purge jumps forward with another Rift Walk, but the Culling will just dissuade his attempts, especially with uh, Steve coming in from behind. Honestly, he didn't even need to use the Culling. It's like, all right, come at me, bro. I've got people behind me to take you down. Either way, Perks is still alive, and he has not died for a long, long time. I've got to say, the Roughnecks are looking nervy here. Yeah. They are looking kind of nervy. Yes, they're getting objectives still. Yes, they're still, you know, if you look at it in terms of uh, economy, they're way, way ahead. But still, these last fights have been going to and fro. And when you've got this kind of gold lead, that shouldn't be the case. Roughnecks are still in the driver's seat in the sense that they just took Dragon without any contest because GSI, even if they had that ward, it wouldn't have gone for it anyway. So they are definitely still leading this game by a significant route, but if they get caught out here, Heva just seeing in the bus, she's gonna go ahead and recall. Will anyone check it? <laughs> check the first three balls, you only need to turn around. And Heva, what he gets away with it. <laughs> Back to base. He's Absolutely a, incredible. He forgets the manly points right yeah. there. He did not flinch. Oh man. At all. He was like, I'm, <laughs> I am recalling in this push. In and you're going to have to check. And they didn't. So he's going to be able to survive a bit longer. And again, if Heaver dies there, 4v5 without a lot of the uh, CC that Nami brings, they're in all sorts of trouble. Nerves of steel indeed. And Roughnecks not getting that pick means that they still have to face down this five man stack. They have to get, at least send one person up to the middle way. That's going to be Twitch and also Kasten just to offer some wave clear. Jeebus has been taking all of the CC to the face recently. Yeah. Like the, the cocoons constantly hit him, the Aka Prince as well. That one's going to find Steve in fact and a flash used and burns in a defensive manner from Steve. This is not going the way of Roughnecks. Just even in the sieging situation, it's very difficult to get in the way of GSI. Yeah, and. As you say, so much of the CC is hitting him. He does have a Negatron Cloak, so it could be Quicksilver Sash coming on up. They have a Mikhail's Crucible as well. So there's a lot of healing potential now for Lucian to keep him alive for longer. But even still, as you say, the last fight, the fight as well where he actually ended up dying was as a result of lack of communication for me. And again, he eats a Cocoon, and that's going to force Prebot to go in. Fair enough, no one dies, but this is... Far from clinical. Yeah, Prebot went in basically just so he was the chew toy for the team of GSI yeah. while, you know, Jeebus, the uh, the stun wore off and he could walk away from the cocoon. This is, what, the second time the cocoons landed just in this one siege alone? The, the flash, again, burnt from Steve and I don't think GSI have burnt anything major. None of the summoners, none of their ultimates. It's just all their basic abilities. They have to the, the cocoons, and they are just burning summoners left and right. This might be the next one that they want, and they go for the full-on engage. Ah, uh, the insect maneuver from Freeport will be knocking Crystal and back in again, and they do manage to pick up the AD carry. Now the question is, can Perks turn this one back around for his team? Because it looks like Mozilla's about to fall, or is he? Perks picks up the one. He's got himself a double kill right now as Zero actually flashes in to try and secure that one on Trundle. In doing so, though, Perks is still alive and kicking and he's trying to make Roughnecks pay for the negligence of him. And here comes Elise from the side as well. This is looking bad for Roughnecks. This could easily turn back around. Kassadin gets his third kill. They've got the fourth with Trundle as well. And can you believe it? Yero's going to go down for the ace. Unbelievable matters. That's the ace. And only losing one member of Krizlan. Incredible. And they didn't even lose anything for that for their privilege either. And that was just perks. He's now picked up the Zonny's Hourglass. Everyone dog pals on top of him. Zonny's Hourglass came in, they had to change targets, and he got a quick double kill. And Shadow, he had nowhere to go. It's always reliant on his team doing well. If he's got no one to support, what does he do? He was literally running around at the Nexus in a circle, yeah. and then Perks had come back to base. It's like, oh, a free kill. Picked up another one. And it just all went the way of GSI, closing the kill gap, closing the gold gap. 7k behind is way better than it looked several minutes ago. Oh, definitely. Astronomically better. And something else I'd like to point out, Crystalin died first in that fight. So they were 4v5 and end up acing afterwards. That is just crazy. But it was a case that Cassidy just couldn't get locked down. They couldn't deal with him. And he run just rampant. You now see me, this large rod comes out for him. What do you reckon? Yeah, it must be Rabbit on, Rabbit on Death Cap. Or yeah. maybe Death Fire Crash. Uh, it could be, it could be. Like, he hasn't really had problems nuking down people, so he might yeah. just go for the Death Fire, uh, the, rather the, uh, the Death Cap, just for the yeah. solid damage coming out. Uh, and looking at the bottom tower as well, that didn't even go down. Um, they oh, lost yeah. nothing. They just won a team fight and maybe a bit of overaggression. That was, of course, a tower dive and a big overextension by Roughnecks, but they wanted something to happen. And Perks goes forwards, takes the full brunt of the culling, but Tidal Wave maybe not in the right place. Couple ultimates burn. Either way, 
They're on the offensive now. That's a big change. Yeah, Culling does have a 20 second uh, less of a cooldown on it, right. so it will be back up beforehand. But I doubt that GSI will put themselves in a position where they have to team fight before the tidal wave is back up. So we have reached that kind of stage of the game where they can start to dictate the pace of this one now. It's, it's more 50 50. We've We've reached the fulcrum point of this seesaw. We've seen it going heavily in Roughneck's favor. We've seen GSI pulling it back, and now I have to say it's, it's dead even. We never, we spoke about it at the start of the game, how both these teams have very good late games, and we never really looked at how good the late game is from Roughnecks because they were winning the early game. So what do they have late game? They have the Lulu to support everyone else on the team. The Lucian's going to be, of course, as strong as he is uh, as ever. Prepon, however, may be getting caught out. And Perks is on the offensive. Can they get themselves a pick, though? The Cocoon does not land, and he will be jumping forwards. The Zonius comes out, however. And Jeebus responds with some more damage. No one gets taken down, but some important summoners and an important item used, used by Kassadin. Just put, they're puffing their chest out and they're beating on it and they're saying, look, we are now dominant in this game. And whenever we engage, you have to respect, you have to back away. So in doing so, it's going to free them up to get their blue buff on Perks, who we've already seen is just doing crazy, crazy things. Crystalline's had a rocky game, but he's now reached that point where he is going to do the DPS. That you need. Infinity Edge has been finished off by him. He has a pot as well, just why the hell not? Yeah, why not? And Irelia is kind of the late game scaling, you know, from the team of Roughnecks. Yeah. And 4, 3, and 7 is a pretty good scoreline in terms of CS, is ahead of his counterpart, Ultra Under in the top lane. But is it enough to deal with the, f like the raw power of Perks and Prislin? Those two are basically hyper carries when we get into the stage of the game. That's exactly it. And uh, the question is, can they deal with them? The answer has been no in the last two team fights, And that's really just going to do so much for the confidence of GSI. It's important to mention, though, that if GSI make a misstep, they could lose this game very quickly. There is just one Nexus Tower. There is a very vulnerable uh, inhibitor in mid as well. So it's still, again, I, I can't stress how close this game actually is. And it's awesome this has happened in the very first of the entire tournament. It's worth mentioning that GSI have basically been playing the last couple of minutes immaculately. Yeah. And they have not misstepped once. And that has been the sole reason they're staying into this game. So as a result, Roughnecks have had a very difficult Ooh. time doing it. They take the dragon. Baron has now spawned. Uh, thought GSI were gonna go for Baron. Yeah, I thought that I thought as well, seeing them on the mini-buff. But they didn't quite get in position and Maybe didn't judge their damage to be high enough at this stage. Perks heads over the wall, very good off from his team. Ooh. Tidal Wave at least zones them away from the path that they wanted to take, but they couldn't capitalize on it. So again, another big summoner burnt, or rather big ultimate burnt, and now they start sieging the middle turret. The engage comes in from Yera. Just lands on the side of Fever though, so they're gonna be able to turn this one back around, or are they? Because we are seeing Prebot going super deep, and Crystal goes down first. This is what we're talking about. One misstep could make all the difference, and now it's GSI who have to back away, and Perks isn't in that kind of situation where he can dart around the Nexus. He now has to turn tail and run away, because Steve is chasing him down. Jeebus this time around has been just about cocooned, Aqua Prison comes in, is not going to save Eva's life. It could buy up enough time for Mozilla, or will it? Steve's going back in. It will, but they're two players down for the next 30 seconds. A three versus five, can they pull it off? They've kind of done it before. They did a four versus five. Can they go one better? They still have cast in alive. They take this bottom inhibitor turret and moving on to the inhibitor as well here, Metas. Roughnecks are very, very commanding and they have made more headway in the last 30 seconds than they have in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So they're in, they're in better shape now and they are still definitely ahead in this game, it has to be said. PSI, lit to fight another day. They do. But two in hips down, going towards Baron right now. Will they try and trap this one? I'm not too sure. No, they're not going to try and trap it just yet. They are going to back away to Baron. Okay, Roughnecks, are you going to go for Baron? With GSI hot on your tail, I'd probably say no. That's a bad idea right now. You don't want to be going for the classic Baron throw at this stage. Roughnecks, however, just go back to base. They have nothing else that they want to do. They do not want to pass go around Baron. They do not want to sit around their turret. They feel confident enough that GSI are not going to head towards their turrets to start sieging. So they just say, okay, we're going to carry on farming. We're going to try and increase our uh, gold totals or go tallies. But we've seen them digging deep before. We've seen them in a really bad situation when the Nexus Tower first fell and in the middle inhibitor was down as well. They managed to grit their teeth and make sure that the game didn't end. And that was, what, 20, 15 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah. So it goes to show again that, yes, they're in a really bad position, but 
They're a tenacious bunch of players. You can't count them out just yet. Let's take a look at some of the items being picked up. We haven't touched on them too much this game, but the Trinity Force, the Randuins, and also heading towards maybe a Banshee's Veil as well from Irelia, and also looking towards the Zephyr, which is fairly common in Europe. That is the classic build, the Trinity Force into uh, Zephyr is your damage core build, and then you just build tanks from there. It used to be Blade of the Ruin King, and then I was like, well, Zephyr gives you so much movement speed plus boots, it's, it's really difficult to get away from Irelia uh, when you get to that item point. So with the rest of the builds, everyone has started to start like equalizing. Before we were like, they have a full big item over their opponents. While that is true, proportionally that's not as bad for GSI. And as you were speaking before about Irelia, that's one of the reasons why I feel she's one of the quintessential anti aim carry champions. Because the movement speed is crazy, she just locks down in like glue. Reminds me of when Mundo was OP. Yeah, never escaped yeah. that dude. As an AD carry, I hated him, and I really don't like playing against Irelia for the same reason. So, as you say, is getting to that stage right now. Have a look at that though. Lulu's items are pretty beefy. Pretty, pretty insane. But Lulu in these fights has, while been landing fantastic ultimates, has not really been item dependent on that point. Again, Roughnecks take another tower. And back at base, though, Mozilla is having to clear all of this away. They don't have a carry to spare, and they go for another engage. Solar Flesh comes down, lands on three players, and this time it's Heaver that goes down first. But look at Crystalline. He's at the back lines. He's putting down the damage. Contaminate's going to come out in a second, and he will pick up that first kill. Yero is very low as well. Pillar comes down. Taiki is not letting them get out of this one alive just yet. In fact, he's gone in by his lonesome and somewhat baited out at the end there from Trundle because they have to defend the Nexus, which is very nearly falling. They may just rush this one down. Everyone from Rough Nexus is very, very low indeed. Krizlin is trying to output the damage. He gets one, he gets the double, he gets the triple. Will it be enough? Can he take down Freeborn? He's actually gone for the Nexus. He gets the game by himself, and that will be finished up by Rough Nexus. Oh my god. I have to say I'm gutted for Chrysler there because he was so, so close to keeping his team alive. But at the end of the day, the better team won, I have to say. It was, they made a bit of a dog's dinner out of it, let's be honest. But they finally got the job done and that's all that counts. Yeah, it was, it was sloppy. But it was a fantastic first game. I don't think we could have wished for anything better from the first game of today. It had everything in there. That ending was absolutely insane. But uh, yeah, we should be back with the next game very shortly. We'll have an update on that in the next couple of minutes. But stick around. We have five more games today. And tomorrow we have another six to go. And then we have the playoffs on the day after that. That will be on the Monday. And uh, that will be the semifinals and the finals in the best of three format. Absolutely. So plenty more awesome games, awesome action to come. It could even be more than that, actually, if we get a tie. That is still on the card yeah. and very possible. So it's going to be a tough one, Paul, but I'm looking forward to every single game. Yes, indeed. So thanks for watching, guys. Come back in a couple of minutes when we're ready to get on with the next match. But until then, we will be taking a quick break. So we'll see you soon.